From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on your Wednesday. We've got a warm week happening and more ahead of that. Yeah, now we may not be as warm as yesterday, but you're right, we're going to be warmer than average again. Right now, we're actually warmer to start the day than what our actual temperature should be for our daytime high today. So that's just crazy it feels weather nice. out it there. It does feel good. Yeah, but hang in there. We do have more of those seasonal like temperatures coming back into play as we start the brand new year and maybe even some snow to usher in 2023, but not today. Now we'll see some mountain snow and we'll tell you more about that here in just a bit. But our high yesterday, 53, a good, what, 18 degrees above the norm. Our overnight low only got down to 40, well above average of that 18 degrees. Top gusts yesterday of uh, 36. Still have a chance to see that this morning here in Billings. Uh, Livingston, Nye, uh, Big Timber, you still have a chance to see some gusts up to about 50 miles an hour. Just a little bit below uh, criteria to have a wind advisory, but I'll say this, Livingston, you hit a, a gust yesterday of about 75. Big Timber, a gust near 80 miles an hour yesterday. Wow. All right, so a dry day yesterday. We actually had a good bit of sunshine at times. So the moisture totals just a little bit above average for the month, uh, piecing just over an inch ahead for the year. Doing okay with those snow totals uh, here in Billings too. All right, we're sitting at 37 right now. Our high today is around 35, so we've already beat that. Feels like 29, winds out the southwest at about 12 miles an hour. 30s and 40s for the most part as we get up and at them today. And uh, that's basically what we're looking at for highs today. 30s and mainly 40s. Cold front coming through tonight. What's that mean for us? And when's that cool down coming back to seasonal? I'll let you know coming up here in just a bit. Okay, Miller, thank you. Yeah, a little warmer now than it will be later. That's yeah, isn't that crazy? It's crazy. Yeah. We'll be uh, checking in with Miller here in a few. Okay. And some headlines out of the mid capital in Montana. After weeks of debate, a state commission has finished a tentative map for the next 10 years of elections sending it to the Montana legislature. MTN senior political reporter Jonathan Ambarian breaks down how the final proposal compares to the current map. The Montana Districting and Apportionment Commission voted last week to advance a proposed state house and Senate district map to the legislature for comment. With support from the nonpartisan chair and two Democratic members of the commission and opposition from two Republicans. Overall, you can see that um, the commission has really balanced um, all of our competing criteria and goals. We moved a long way on priorities the Republicans set. You know, I'm disappointed in the, the final product uh, that we're forwarding to the legislature. Um, I do not view it as quite a fair map. I, I think it was slanted in favor of our Democratic colleagues. This is the map Montana has used to elect state House and Senate members since 2014. And this is the tentative map that the commission will present to the legislature next month. Compared to the current map, population trends have led to changing representation. Currently, nine house districts are entirely in Gallatin County. Under the proposed map, ten would be centered there, with parts of the county in three other districts. The shapes of large rural districts in eastern Montana have also changed significantly. Overall, about 60% of districts are expected to lean toward Republicans, which could make it harder for the party to maintain the two-thirds supermajority they currently hold in the legislature. Republicans on the commission objected to dividing several large counties into multiple districts containing urban and suburban areas, saying that advantaged Democrats. But Democrats said the GOP would still maintain an overall advantage and could win more seats than their statewide share of the vote. A person who pays attention to politics is going to see that, um, you know, a map that just um, was drawn to uh, and eliminates double digit Republicans likely um, between the two uh, legislative bodies is going to be view that and say, wait a minute, I thought this was supposed to be a bipartisan process. They are far less likely on this coming map to gain super majorities with less than 60% of the vote statewide, like they just did in 2022. So if that feels like an injustice to them, um, you know, that's, that's the way it's going to feel to them. The commission is set to officially present the map to the legislature on January 6th. After that, lawmakers will have 30 days to give their feedback on the proposal. Then the commission will have 30 more days to consider that comment before finalizing the district map. In Helena, Jonathan Ambarian, MTN News. Thank you, Jonathan. And coming up this evening on the KTVQ Facebook page, Face the State with myself and Jackie Coffin. Live at 6, we have interviews with each of the top Republicans and Democrats in both the House and the Senate. 
We're hearing from them their priorities for the session, which include a massive budget surplus that needs to be addressed, housing issues, the economy, and so much more. And if you can't tune in tonight, the, sh the show will be streaming on the Q2 app Friday, starting at 9 p.m. through Sunday. In 2022, we saw Americans go to the polls for midterm elections. President Biden trying to deal with the economy. Former President Trump already looking ahead to 2024 and the Supreme Court issuing decisions that will have impacts for decades to come. Skyler Henry has more details from Washington. The people have spoken. Midterm elections made 2022 a high stakes year for politics. Democrats held control of the Senate and even gained a seat after Georgia's runoff race. 51, yeah. a slim majority. That is great. But celebrations were short lived after Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema announced she was leaving the Democratic caucus to be an independent. Republicans narrowly recaptured the House, giving the GOP control of one chamber. For me, the hours come for a new generation to lead the Democratic caucus that I so deeply respect. Nancy Pelosi announced she was stepping down from her leadership position following the Republican win and a brutal attack on her husband. Investigators said the House Speaker was the intended target. Are you ready to take this state back? Some of the most prominent midterm candidates backed by former President Trump lost their races. As the GOP shifted blame to him, he announced another run for the White House. America's comeback starts right now. Trump's announcement came just before the appointment of a special counsel to oversee investigations into the former president, including his handling of classified material at his Florida home. <laughs> Trump was also the focus of the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th assault. A series of public hearings featured testimony from people near the president that day, including aide Cassidy Hutchinson. The president said something to the effect of, I'm the effing president, take me up to the Capitol now. The committee released a final report laying out the former president's culpability for the insurrection. We believe that the evidence warrants a criminal referral of former president Donald J. Trump. Congress also passed a handful of President Biden's key legislative priorities, including the Inflation Reduction Act with $369 billion in climate investments over the next decade, the first major gun control bill in nearly 30 years, and more than $18 billion in aid for Ukraine in its fight against Russia. Putin's invasion of Ukraine in March uh, set gas prices soaring literally around the world. President Biden spent much of the year trying to ease the economic strain on Americans. He tapped the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to lower gas prices and canceled up to $10,000 in student loan debt for millions of Americans. Legal challenges to the loan forgiveness are headed to the Supreme Court. In June, the high court's conservative majority upended decades of precedent, reversing Roe v. Wade, ending federal protection for abortion rights. The health and life of women in this nation are now at risk. This decision is a victory for the pro-life movement. Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson took the oath ahead of the fall term. I, Ketanji Brown Jackson. Becoming the first African-American woman to serve on the Supreme Court. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. Also this year, Congress acted just before the end of the year to pass the Respect for Marriage Act, which makes same-sex and biracial marriages legal nationwide. Lawmakers rushed, rushed to pass that bill in case the Supreme Court reversed the decision-making, the, uh, the decisions making those marriages legal. And back in the Treasure State, a bad wreck in the Billings Heights, keeping an emergency crew busy yesterday. It happened around 6 o'clock on Main Street. Two vehicles involved, one of them ending up upside down. Witnesses tell us that a sedan was traveling at a high rate of speed when it struck a white SUV, causing it to roll over. And there's that scene. Um, really a lot of damage. That vehicle crushed. We do know several people transported to the hospital. Don't have any other details about their conditions right now. And the Supreme Court stand, hands the Biden administration at least a temporary defeat on immigration, saying that Title 42 must continue to be enforced for now. The pandemic era rule was put into place by former President Trump and has been used since then to expel a majority of migrants from the Mexican border. More than a dozen Republican governors have sued the Biden administration to keep that order in place. The administration admitted in court papers that it expected a large increase in migration if Title 42 is lifted, potentially doubling the number of migrants gathered at the border. El Paso has extended an emergency declaration as it struggles to accommodate the growing migrant population arriving there daily.
There are babies, there are little kids here, there, there are all kinds of people here. The Supreme Court will hold hearings in February with a decision on Title 42 expected by early next summer. Gas prices are way down from the record highs they hit last summer. In fact, prices just under three bucks a gallon in Billings. But don't get too excited because according to Gas Buddy, that price at the pump could rise to four dollars a gallon by May. This because it costs more to produce the summer grade gasoline and more Americans hit the roads in warmer months. However, experts say there's a lot of uncertainty in gas prices and accurate predictions are challenging. This morning, we're looking ahead to those post-Christmas sales. In the face of inflation, some Montana-made shops are making the post off trying to entice customers back to their stores after the Christmas shopping is done. Here's MTN's Kristen Merkel with how. The Great Rocky Mountain Toy Company is a staple in downtown Bozeman, and with this year coming to an end, like many small businesses, they reflect on sales this year and why this last week is so important. I usually like to look at the Legos and what kind of stuff they have up to date and fun things to play with. This toy store has been in Bozeman since 1992. Weston Monforton visits toy stores like this pretty often. Usually, sometimes like once a month, once or twice a month at most. As the year winds down, manager of the toy store Ryan Casavaugh says this year has been great in sales. This year has been incredible. Um, yeah, we did better than last Christmas. I think even our summer was was really good. With inflation taking a toll on many companies this year, Casava assures it isn't making a huge difference for the toy store, and they do provide some room in the back for sale items. Everything has gone up. All, most of our stuff has gone up. Um, but for the most part, you know, no, because it's gone up across the board. Casava says they beat last year's Christmas sales by the 22nd of December, and this week they're hoping for sales to continue to take off. After Christmas, we get a lot of the people who are in town visiting for Christmas who now they have the gift cards or they have the grandkids or they're here to see people, so a lot of that. He says this week is very beneficial in preparing for the slower season. Things kind of do slow down. You know, once we get into the less tourism side, we'll still stay busy, but not nearly as busy. So kind of finishing up the year this way is really helpful. With the toy store's growing popularity compared to last year, when asked what the most popular toy was in the shop, Casava insisted it was Legos, and Monforton proved just that. Star Wars um, Lego set. Why I like it is because I just like Star Wars. In Bozeman, Kristen Merkel, MTN News.